Ah yes, midweek, Wednesday morning, morning. Hoping your week is going well. This is uh, productive and all good. And we got good things in store for you this morning. I'm Chevron McMillan from the Agency for Public Information and I'm with my gorgeous co-host, Yenka. Yenka, morning. Morning. I love morning, that. SVG. I love that top. Thank you. It's pretty cool. Thank you. We're Thank stepping you out much. in January, about January, yeah. like. Come on. It's a new year, you know what I mean? It's a new year, new things. New thing I go on. Morning, SVG. Ah, uh, yeah. Morning to you guys. Morning to the fisher folk and the farmers, especially. Mm -hmm. This morning, your uh, minister is here, and we're going to be chatting with him. That's yes, coming up in a while. He's. He's already backstage. I, I like how you said your minister. Yeah. You know, because he is really the people's minister. Yeah. 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 Did you see that picture of him on our page with the kids? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. It's cool, eh? Everybody loves him. He blended, him. he blended. Yeah, his, yeah. I mean... The haircut too, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to that. We, we can't tell his age from, from that picture at all. Yeah. Somebody said he looked like he's 20 years old. Yeah. We'll find out. We're going to chat with him later on. But first... It's time to get some morning motivation. Good morning to Lisa in Toronto. Morning SVG. Your word of the day is be you. Enjoy being the wonderful and amazing you. The blessing of finding out the person we were created to be and being the person indeed is a fantastic gift. To live the life of your authentic self is marvelous. When you are being you, it's when you feel you are in a zone. To get there, it requires asking yourself some hard questions and not liking the answers, but accepting them. So today, take a look at being you and who you were created to be. Have yourself the most amazing day. Thank you very much, Lisa. You have a great day yourself. All right. Well, let's find out what the weather is doing. I'm hoping it's going to be good. Yinka's going to tell us. Let's go to our shot of <laughs> Kingstown. Oh, what a beautiful morning it is. Yeah, Port Kingstown Ooh. looks so pretty. Mm. Look at that glow. Look at that glow on the water. The water's so calm. I know. Mm. Good for sailing. Today's yeah. a good day for sailing. Very inviting. Good morning to all yes. the people coming up from Beckway. <laughs> Uh, yeah. on the Grenadines. And uh, there's Fort Charlotte. Ah, yes. Thanks to Antonio. He's got it going on. Mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's yeah. me. All right. So the, it, the present conditions are partly cloudy. And it is, the synopsis says that a ridge of high pressure is the dominant feature. It is forecasted to be partly cloudy with a few scattered showers becoming mostly fair. I anticipate during um, the rest of the day. So that's something to look forward to. Just a, a little bit of rain to keep the heat at bay. <laughs> so walk with your umbrellas and raincoats if you need to. All right, and that's our weather for today. Ah, oh, ridge of high pressure. That means beautiful sunshine. Yeah. Warm weather. Mm -hmm. If you have clothes to wash, wash your clothes this morning, hand them out on the line. Yeah, you but can look go out to work for these scattered. Look out for these scattered showers. No, the showers will scatter. It will scatter. Just, it will scatter. Just, <laughs> <laughs> you wash clothes and you have run, run as soon as you yeah, hear the rain. Hill. That's a that's a daily exercise. Oh, in <laughs> it rains yeah, no matter what the weather says. It yeah. rains daily in Green Hill. So wow. you always have to. You kind of have to keep one eye outside mm -hmm. all the time. <laughs> And kind of, it kind of, you know, old people say it rain break down. Mm -hmm. That's what it does in Green Hill. So it, it doesn't give you any warning. Really? Yeah, it's like, wow. Oh, it's raining. Really, no, all right. You say in both, sprint out. Wow. Get that. Yeah. So that's it must how it be is. always cold up there. It's always cold. It's cool. Lovely. Which is good because you don't need to buy fans and air conditioning and, and so on. You know? Natural nice. AC. Save like on that. electricity. Perfect. It's perfect. Yeah. Invite right. you up. Come on up. Move in. 
<laughs> All right, yeah. so let's find out what's trending, mm-hmm. shall we? Mm-hmm. All right. Prime Minister is launching his book yes. today. This is a local tomorrow, launch. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Um, tomorrow. Sorry. Yes. This tomorrow, is a local 19th. launch. Uh-huh. He, he did this. He, he did a launch for this in, in New, York. New York City. Yes. Uh, a few months ago, mm-hmm. and um, so tomorrow he's going to be doing uh, the local launch. Uh, it's a time of respite. Beyond COVID, volcanic eruption, hurricane, and uh, global turmoil. Fresh hope for St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And yes. um, the, the review is going to be done by Dr. Richard Byron Cox, mm-hmm. you know, in, in conversation with yes. uh, Prime Minister Gonzalez. This is, some, of course, we're going to bring it live. Mm-hmm. So you can, you can so watch you won't it. Miss a, you won't miss a thing. Yeah, <laughs> you can watch it on the API page yes and our affiliates you know mm-hmm. mc radio vc3 three etc all right yeah. look up for that all right so uh on site which is offering national support for internship training and employment mm-hmm. uh they are set to um to go off in February and they are hiring, well, internship training persons for different jobs, uh, 175 persons between the ages of 18 and 34. And this is being funded by the government of Taiwan. Well, this is a new initiative. Uh, It's sort of another level uh, for the YES program Mm -hmm. and SED program. It's an internship program, mm-hmm. you, you understand what, what, what interns are. It's basically designed to give young people, just like the YES program, and mm-hmm. SED program, young professionals really, uh, job experience. Because when you leave school, the first thing people ask for is your experience. They yes. don't even want to know how many, what qualifications you have, <laughs> what experience do you have. Because experience yes. really is king in True. the world of work. True. Um, so that they can get this training now the majority of the yes workers and the mm-hmm. set workers are employed within the sphere of the government of the government yes the difference with on site is, is that they will be um, employed by private yeah. by the private sector so they're going to be working with business places yes. etc and they'll be paid commensurate with their level of education Experience, yes that's that's primary secondary um, post-secondary and, and also university. pre-secondary hey yeah pre-secondary also well yeah yes <laughs> so so that's uh that's on site that's the name of this uh, program again as Yinka mentioned this is funded by the republic the of china and taiwan, taiwan. Mm-hmm. and, and the government of saint vincent and the grenadines also yeah. now but they put Injecting in over half a million in US dollars yeah so you well you know that's over a million you see the government of saint vincent and the grenadines has uh, made uh um, put in some money in this program 000? as well. Uh, yes. So the uh, I think they're still taking applications. Yes, the deadline for applications is the twentieth. Um, November. The 20th November. Of is it January? January. January. Yeah, twentieth of January. Yes. And, um, and, um, and we so should that's Friday. Some of the some of the places where you can get you can apply online. Um, but also, you can collect you the blog. application forms. At, let's see. Uh, you can collect the application forms at Invest SVG uh, Chamber In, of Invest Commerce. Invest SVG is located CED, over at the financial complex. The Ministry of Education, Ministry of National Mobilization. You know, agencies like that. You can you can yeah. go and collect the the um the forms. You can also visit our Facebook page for the information as to where you can collect the forms, and there is a link posted mm-hmm. for persons who would prefer to apply online. There you go. Yes. So this is definitely one for you, young people, on site. Check yes. that out. Take advantage of the opportunities. Yeah, and. Speaking of opportunities, I really love this one. Uh, it's a writing competition that was hosted by the Ministry of Education in collaboration with Hoda Education. And it was a writing competition for grade six students across St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And it comes to an end 
today they have the final 10 finalists mm -hmm. and they are going to be writing their final pieces at 9 a.m this morning and the closing ceremony will be held at 1 30 p.m where the finalists will read their pieces and then the winners well the, the top three would be um, selected it's pretty interesting what these um, youngsters come up with yeah um they you know <laughs> When I was at that age, I, I, well, I, I did, mm -hmm. but I, I wish I had that kind of opportunity when I was at yeah. that age I to know. be able to express myself like that, um, you know, for rewards, mm -hmm. other than just passing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. uh, yes. And this is, this is good for the grade six students too, who are getting ready to, to do their CPA, CPA. exams. But you know, they have to do a lot of writing yeah. for... Mm -hmm. Um, their uh, portfolios for yes. CPE. And to be able to write well, you have to read well. So mm -hmm. this encourages them to read mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, definitely. Yes. All right. right. So yeah, this is this is our final uh, piece for what's trending. The Minister of Agriculture, he's here. We're going to talk to him about it in mm -hmm. a bit. But they are working with the traffickers and the farmers mm -hmm. to produce a minimum <laughs> uh, base price basically a uh, minimum price charging for various agricultural produce including things like dasheen for instance mm -hmm. and i remember listening to his presentation uh, for the budget and he said look um early in, in this year i'm going to go down to trinidad and meet with the stakeholders there the uh, purchasers etc government ministers but he said one of the things the government minister and some of the purchasers in Trinidad told him is if you want us to pay you more money for your produce you got to package it properly you can't be sending it in crocker's bag <laughs> that's what he said um, and and expect us to pay you premium right. yes. premium dollar mm -hmm. um, which is something that I actually agree with yes. you know mm -hmm. um, the packaging, Presentation and does, packaging is important. Yeah, does mean a lot yeah so but but this is great news for the farmers because mm -hmm. uh, what it means is your cost of production is better able to be met and what's happened uh, with the fluctuations in the market mm -hmm. is you know sometimes you're up sometimes you're down you sometimes you make back your money true you, you barely scrape you make back your money yeah sometimes you um you get a profit and other times you get a loss yeah. And uh, this is this is barely this is it's really um, to eliminate that loss. Right. You and know? we we want the farmers to get top dollar for yeah. their for their produce. And Not for, just for top dollar, but wool, even they... when because the markets really do decide, right? Yeah. But even when the markets are down, you should be able to recoup your expenses. True. Right? You shouldn't be at a loss as a farmer that's true, that's true. for feeding people. Yeah. Here, because what do we do without food? True. What would we do without the farmers? We die. That's, that's it. I don't want to think about it. Yeah. <laughs> die. I don't want to think about that. Yeah. But, yeah. Here's so something we'll to think about. about Saboto that. Caesar is outside. He's getting ready to come inside. Yeah. What? Outside. <laughs> <laughs> I am so confused. He's inside. He's in the building. He's outside here. He's outside okay. the studio. Outside. He's okay. inside, but outside. All right. He's out on the inside. Yes. Up next. <laughs> <laughs> so, we'll see this next. Diabetes is among the top three leading causes of death. Are you living with diabetes? If so, you may be at risk for developing complications, especially during this COVID pandemic. Let's tackle this problem by complying with taking your medication, increasing your physical activities, increasing eating a balanced and nutritious diet, checking your feet as foot care is important, and contacting your healthcare provider. Remember, diabetes can lead to blindness, amputation, and numerous harmful and life-threatening effects. Protect yourself. Know your numbers. Heart's Movement SVG reminds you to love your body and treat it right. Your health is shared responsibility.
Coming off of last year, where we saw rebound and recovery in the agricultural sector, in the fisheries sector, we saw some positive movements in the fisheries sector with the fleet expansion program and we saw food security enhancement in agriculture. Surely the Minister of Agriculture must have been happy. He sounded very happy presenting his budget presentation. <laughs> he was very proud indeed. So let's look back a little bit at last year and let's look forward to 2023. Morning, Minister. Morning, morning, morning. How are you doing? It's great to have you. It's definitely a pleasure and an honor to be here this morning and I want to say to the food producers of St. Vincent and the Grenadines and all the stakeholders in agriculture and fisheries, a blessed 2023 to you and I'm really happy to be here so early in the year to speak to you. Well, we put a picture of you on our Facebook page, a photo of you with some kids yes. and everybody's been commenting that you seem to be aging backwards. <laughs> what's, the, what's, what's the voodoo spell you're using? Well, well somebody listening to the program texted me and said that they want to open a spectacle shop in St. Vincent. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's it's, it's um, hard work. Hard, hard work. work. Hard, hard work, work is hard keeping work. you young. All yes. right. All right. Minister Caesar, uh, you mentioned that you know, we've had some gains in the agricultural sector over the, especially in the first half of last year, 2022. We saw rebound in production and value of exports, etc. Um, how did that come about? What areas did we really see rebound in? And I noted in my budget address that the, the baseline year that I was using was the period when we had the volcanic eruptions. So if we go pre-COVID, we recognize that there were many farmers, fishers who were not able to go out on the seas or in the fields, as the case may be. And because of that, you had a slight dip in production. But when we had the major impact was when we had the eruptions of La Soufre. So in the budget, I was explaining that we are trending upwards, coming out of the volcanic eruptions, and that in 2022, we are working towards getting our pre-COVID, pre-volcanic eruptions numbers. And uh, definitely, that is a step in the right direction. And I want to congratulate the farmers and, and the fishers over the period, last two weeks, we had several meetings with farmers because it's one thing to have the budget presentation and to set the narrative right and to explain the, the political will of the government. But we are at a stage now where we are meeting in the, in the highways and in the byways we are going from constituency to constituency, from district to district, from region to region, speaking to the farmers to explain exactly the, the text and the context of the budget. Because our aim is in 2023 to get beyond and above the numbers for 2022. How have those meetings and consultations been going? The first meeting was held quite naturally in the, the most Ma productive valley. Maripa. In, in the Caribbean, the Maracor Valley, yeah. and we had over a hundred and something persons there. Second meeting was in South Central, and uh, we went up to North Windward, and yesterday we were in North Central Windward. The Prime Minister addressed the, the farmers. So already we have spoken to over 500 farmers, explaining to them clearly the text of the budget and how we intend for the farmers to actively participate. And the reason this is so critical, many farmers, when we were in Parliament speaking about the issues touching and concerning the budget, some farmers were in their fields. There were fishers who were pulling in their boats in Barrelly and in Calicoa. And you, you can't take it for granted that we were all listening. And uh, 
importantly, Candyman, going forward, there is a need for active participation. You can't be a farmer in Marequa and saying, I'm out here doing my own thing. Or a fisherman in Clare Valley saying, well, I'm going out on my boat. What I catch, I'm going to sell it wherever I want to sell it, whatever quality, whatever standard. The government, we have outlined that our quest is to establish a diversified production platform. As I noted on a previous program, we are not in the dispensation of the banana epoch. We have passed that. And we are growing a multiplicity of crops. It means that we have to transfer the technology as to how do we do this? How do we get it done? We have to mobilize the farmers into producer groups and also the fishers. And we are looking at establishing an excellent cooperative platform in the country. We have to provide the assistance from the government. We have to create the enabling environment and we have to continue to communicate so that we can move commodities from the farm gate, from the boats to the markets. So there is a period of obtaining and transferring information and I really want to thank the API in general and I want to thank you Candyman and the morning program for the work that you continue to do in getting the information out. Yesterday in the meeting with over 100 and something farmers, everyone wrapped attention wanting to understand and to appreciate what are the next steps. It's not a situation as we had in 1992, where when you got up on a, a Monday morning, you knew for sure that Tuesday was shipment, the truckers were organized, the, 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 the packers, my, my mother was a packer, a banana packer, my father was a grader, and we knew in the village in Marqua who were the persons who were to head the bananas, mm -hmm. the persons who were tubing, doing the tubing, um, the deflowering. So we had a situation, and it's, it was one that was coming out of 40, 50 years history. What we are doing now in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, after a decade of analyzing and assessing which commodities we want to go into, where the bigger profits are, we are now shaping that framework so that all of the participants within the production platform would be able to properly understand and assess their roles and responsibilities. Well, that's perfect. So, you, as you, as you speak about farmers, uh, you mentioned in your budget presentation that you will be traveling to Trinidad because locally, you're working with farmers and you're working with traffickers and so on to set minimum prices for the agricultural produce. And we spoke about it a little earlier on. What's this all about? And um, how is it expected to change the lives of the farmers? In my job in the seat that I have, there are some difficult issues that I have to address. And as we say in common parlance, you can't free the razor and free the case. You can't want to play mass and you're afraid of powder. And uh, one of the biggest issues confronting the agriculture sector is not the issue of production. I am confident that if I say to the farmers of St. Vincent and the Grenadines that we have a market for dashing that they will plant up the whole of Marco Valley. They will go to Vomo, they will go to Congo Valley, they will go to Greg's, and they would produce. Coming out of Hurricane Thomas in 2010, farmers went straight back to the fields. In the middle of eruptions of La Soufre, you had men still waking up, going to their lands. We have a very resilient cadre of food producers in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. But at the end of the day, the issue is, are the farmers getting a fair price for their hard work and dedication? 
And for years, the conversation is ongoing. And this year, we have decided to work with the stakeholders, work with the traffickers and the farmers to address this issue. So I'll give an example. You have a dashing farmer in Maracua purchasing a, a sack of fertilizer for $100. And that is after the discount, the subsidy from the government of sometimes $25 or $30. You have to plant the dashin after preparing the land. You have to weed. You have to harvest. You have to pay all your workers. You have to take out something for yourself. And after all of that, you produce a very high quality commodity. There is a market for the commodity. Someone comes, they, they would purchase it, and uh, when you see the price, it just can't match up to your input. You're making a loss. You're making a loss. And uh, what we decided to do in the Ministry of Agriculture, we assess the cost for labor. We know how much you pay for your workers. We assess the cost for the herbicides, and the pesticides that you have to use, the cost for the leasing of your land, the cost for the transportation, and we went right through the value chain and we attached a cost to the farmer, farmer's input. And we recognize that to, to grow a pound of dashing, it's on or about one dollar up to a dollar ten okay therefore one pound one pound so basically it's a because you know we sell by the sacks mm -hmm. it's basically 100 to 110 dollars per sack but we all know that sometimes when the traffickers come it's forty dollars they will offer you as low as thirty dollars yeah and forty dollars no as i said on a previous program I have to be fair to everyone. The traffickers, they go to a market, and sometimes when they go to the market, the fact that they don't have the possibility of storing those commodities that are not sold within that eight hour window, mm -hmm. they are asked to reduce their prices significantly. Because you're in Trinidad, you at the port, you have 400 sacks of dashin. You say you're holding out for $150 a sack, easy. Because you had to pay the boat, you had to pay your truck, man. And the minister in St. Vincent said you had to bring back $110 per sack for the farmer. And the person tells you, well, the port about to close in, okay, and the man. Port closing in the next hour. You still have your sacks there. I am giving you $75 a sack. You could decide not to sell. But when you really hear the great closing, you might take 50, you might take 40. So I am not blaming, I'm not casting blame on the, on the traffickers. But something, traffickers, the Ministry of Agriculture and the farmers, we all agree that there's a problem. Because the traffickers, they agree as well that there's a problem and uh, we are going to begin to solve this issue and if you notice of all the things i promised in the budget the first one i'm dealing with is the price and the pricing today i'm going to take to the to the cabinet for discussion the establishment of a a pricing committee that will be chaired by the chief agriculture officer we would have traffickers on the committee, we'd have farmers on the committee, we'd have members from the cooperatives, consumer affairs on that committee. And we're going to take no more than two weeks to come up because the Ministry of Agriculture will be putting out there for discussion 
the calculated minimum prices based on our assessment. And uh, after two weeks, we intend to, to have that published. We are going to put it up. Um, we will provide for the API. It's going to be in the newspapers, the minimum prices for discussion. So that when you speak with the cooperatives and your leaders in the different groups, you will have a good idea of the figures. Therefore, you will be able to have an appreciation as to the ranges that we are looking at. In every meeting held thus far, we have the 100% support of the farmers. And I want to say this, the traffickers, they have served St. Vincent and the Grenadines well, and they continue to do excellent work. In other countries, you have a centralized marketing corporation, marketing board. You have one in Grenada, you have one in St. Lucia, in Dominica. In St. Vincent and the Grenadines, the traffickers, they play that very important role. And uh, the role of the government is not to do everything, but to create that enabling environment for the private sector and persons with the entrepreneurial will to thrive but wherever we see that there is evidence, any evidence of abuse or inequities, then it is the role of the government to step in. Is it a comfortable conversation? No. Is the solution only on the St. Vincent and the Grenadine side? No. We have to go to Trinidad and Tobago because we have to interact with those persons in the marketplace. And I want to give an example. A farmer raised yesterday. He said that since the Love Box program, farmers have benefited from the best prices over the longest period of time mm -hmm. since the banana industry. Because the Love Box program, the prices were set by the Ministry of Agriculture, and we purchased at four different places in the country and uh, when persons when the traffickers went to the farmers the farmers said well if you don't give me this you know i'm selling to love box the interesting thing was when we paused on the love box program for the cleaning of the facilities as the lady said yesterday in a twinkling of an eye the prices went from the high prices which the same traffickers were paying for the last six months, we closed for a week, the prices went from a dollar. Nose dive. From $100 per sack, right down to $30 per sack. The question the, the, the father asked. So, the, the, all of a sudden, the people in Trinidad and Tobago, they just decided to just pay less, or oh, something happened in Trinidad and Tobago. So I believe that with the support from the government to the traffickers, the support to the farmers, and it is not a one-sided thing. To get good prices, you have to package it properly too. So you mentioned that Trinidadians have indicated that they yes. wish to get better packaging. We need better packaging. So how are we going to fix that problem? Well, the Bureau of Standards they are going to introduce a minimum standard that we have to utilize to package the goods in order to, to export to the markets. The crocus bags, they are cheap. You get one for $2. And you could use, persons when you use your, your fertilizer, you wash out the sack, the manual sack. Or if you have pigs, our animals, as the case may be, and you, you throw the feed, you wash out the sack. You get, you get a feed, feed, sack. You feed sack, right? You know, when you, if you're helping somebody, <laughs> if you're helping somebody to move produce, you avoid the mill feed sack because they're bigger. You yeah. go for the, for the smaller <laughs> ones. <laughs> but um, we can't be sending the, the producing sacks like that and just mark up if it's candy man is your name. CM, put it on the boat. A lot of mechanical damage will take place. And the hard work of the farmer at the end of the day 
you would not be compensated because of the final quality. I remember one time visiting a market in Barbados and I saw the plantings. Plantings were all black. And I said to him, I said, is this the, the quality that you have? And he said, yes, that's the quality. And I asked him, I said, but is this normal? He said, that's how we get the plant. He said, the planting is very sweet inside, mm -hmm. so we don't study the skin. But what is happening is that when the farmer harvests the planting, you know you deal with bananas in a delicate way because you have to peel it so that if there's a blemish, you will see it. But they would throw the plantings up into a truck. You see the trucks passing yes. on, a, on, a weekly, on a weekend. Persons would sit on the planting. People would walk on them. And then you end up having a box that was supposed to, to hold 40 pounds. They're pressuring it together so you hold, you're holding anything upwards to, to 70, 75 pounds in that box. And you have that constant bruising. bruising. Mm -hmm. So when the planting is in Barbados now and you go to purchase, well, they say, well, that's how we buy the plantings. But we know that we have arguably the best quality of planting in the Caribbean. Well, that's what I'm thinking, because it's a hell of a thing to have to be forced to buy that. Exactly. I mean, that would not sell and at our market it. here. That will not sell in St. Vincent yeah. and the Grenadines. And what we are doing inadvertently is selling ourselves short. Yeah. And because uh, once we have competition, if somebody starts sending better looking plant into Barbados, then that's the ours point. won't sell. All won't sell. Yeah. So we, we are working on getting a lot of these smaller things right because with the global inflation, the cost of fertilizer, the government is continuing the, the subsidies, and uh, because of that we are able to compete and to get into more markets. I had a conversation yesterday with someone in the private sector and they are looking at a, a renaissance of sorts, a rebirth of what pertained in the days of bananas mm -hmm. when you had the days of the boxing plants, the boxing plant days, and the, the economic activities that took place around the boxing plants. And there were set days for harvesting and all of that. And uh, they're looking to come in to capitalize the food terminal markets. You saw... But that was one of the success stories. From last one of the year. success stories. You saw how the, the, the activities at La Croix. Um, and I'm not afraid to say... I, I, you know, well, the that's criticism. normal in the Marika Valley. You know. <laughs> <laughs> not in yeah. And uh, we, we had... An organization coming in and purchasing right there, Marco, half a million dollars worth of, of goods. And at the end of this month, we're going to have the final payment of on about $120,000 to farmers. And we're going to go back to Marco and make the final payment. But they want to, in a very planned, structured, organized way, to look at all commodities. We're doing it now from a private sector standpoint. So what the government is doing is that, if you notice, we have started with the Maracuwa Valley because it is a, an excellent agri-ecological zone. You can plant every single day of the year. And because of the cool conditions, you are not really impacted as such by many of the vagaries of climate change, as in other areas, for example, like San Susi, by the month of March, it gets really dry. And if you plant in the, in the wrong time, it, it's impacted in a very negative way. So we started the expansion of Dashin in Mariaqua. The farmers are excited. Remember we had that, that discussion right on this program about the 40,000 sacks of urea. We have 15,000 sacks remaining. And uh, by the end of this month, we are going to have another mass distribution. We did not put all the urea into the hands of the, the farmers, because remember when Mr. Jackson was here, he, he, he sounded a word of... Overuse. Overuse, overuse a word of caution. Was, um, a concern. We have another 4,000 sacks of... Just to stick a pin, 
Um, obviously, you've been following up with the farmers yes. on, you know, how they've been using the urea, etc. What kind of feedback have you been getting? Excellent, excellent. In fact, um, some persons are saying that when you compare it with the other urea that we had from before selling at the input warehouse, that this is far superior to that urea. So the, the impact on production is? We are going to see the impact on production probably over the next two to three months because persons put in their crops, the shorter term crops, it's um, dashing, for example, will take seven months, eight months. So we're probably in the second month, so about five more months. But what I'm noticing is that there's a cadre of young farmers coming forward to benefit from the assistance. The assistance gave a veritable jump start. So the farmers were saying, we know of the fertilizer from Morocco. We're here to, for that assistance. We know of the, the fertilizer, the urea from Venezuela. We're here for that assistance. And this year, we are going to unfold a 10 million US dollars program, a grant, uh, a program, sorry, from the, from the World Bank. And that program, we are going to see farmers receiving animals, fertilizer, pesticides, herbicides. I've just completed a program where we're going to set up and launch. The schedule date is the 23rd of this month, a labor program whereby farm, farm workers would be registered, farmers would be registered as well. And we will have teams going out on a morning to the different farms. So if you are a Dasheen farmer, you go to Lacroix, you register. If you are a farm worker, you don't own land, well, as we say, those work with people. You go and you register, and we will form teams of three, 12 teams in Marekwa, and we will have supervisors. And on a morning from 8.30 to one o'clock, you will go, you will work. We'll submit the um, timesheets and you will be paid. And that is significant assistance to the farmers. And importantly, you will not receive labor support to work lands already under cultivation. <laughs> you have to bring fresh lands under production because we have that market in Miami that we have to get into. And there is a discussion about the extra regional trade, particularly to Europe, because there's a huge market for Dasheen in France and in the United Kingdom, and also markets in, in Germany. So it's a really exciting period. As I said what earlier- about, What about ginger? Ginger, ginger as well. The, the price for ginger is pretty low at the moment. Yes. And uh, what happened is that it's the same situation where we, we noted earlier mm -hmm. that some of our traders are not really able to negotiate in the marketplace. And the issue that I did not touch on earlier, why we are really forced and pushed to get into this issue, the traffickers no longer can travel on a weekly basis to mm -hmm. Trinidad and Tobago and in some cases to Barbados. So they basically, they are sending the produce. Yeah, so they can't negotiate the They price. can't negotiate the prices. Yeah. So unless we create an environment on the Trinidad side to support the, the work that is to be done by the trader, and I want to say this, we are not leaving any trafficker behind, we are not leaving any farmer behind. I know that some of the farmers, some of the traffickers have been sending me some messages. I, what, I, what are the threats? Love messages. Love messages. <laughs> but as I said earlier, in all of these messages, there is an underlying, there is a common denominator. We have a problem. Yes. And whenever there is a problem, we have to fix these problems. And I'm telling you this, the trafficker who actively participates in this conversation will be able, at the end of the day, 
to carve out more for themselves as well. Yes. Because when we look at the prices that the consumers in Trinidad and Tobago have to pay at the supermarkets, the trafficker ain't getting that money. Mm -hmm. Neither. Neither the farmer. Neither the farmer getting that money. But somebody's getting it. Somebody's getting the money. Okay. <laughs> somebody's getting the money. And I'm not saying that that person should not get any money at all yeah. because they're playing a particular role. But there's a need for fairness. Yeah. And it I am a very. a of share of the pie. I am a very fair had. person. Yeah. I'm a very fair person. When I go to bed at night, I want to sleep and I can't sleep comfortably. Yeah. So, so you're saying better negotiated prices. Yes. doesn't only augur well for the farmer there's there's benefit there for the trafficker as well yes and that's the message yes all but right somebody's taking out a little bit too much from a, the a little, a little you say yes all right <laughs> let's go to morocco you met with a, a delegation from morocco yes. um, what is it about seven days ago a week seven ago, days so? ago yes yeah. i want to thank the government and people of morocco for the the work they continue to do not only in St. Vincent and the Grenadines but also in other countries in the in the OECS because importantly I see St. Vincent and the Grenadines as a part of a sub-regional ecosystem so when other islands around St. Vincent and the Grenadines when they receive benefits it augurs well for the entire production platform that we are aspiring to to develop and to advance so coming out of the meeting we were invited to visit the country and uh, some of the issues that we addressed touched and concern livestock production it's fantastic production because I know I get the messages to the love notes that Sabi is sending away all the cattle and what we haven't heard as yet is that on the boat is the only cattle going, sheep, goats, and pigs as well. And uh, it is our duty as a ministry to find markets. And uh, before the end of next month, we are going to renew that memorandum of understanding with the government and people of Grenada so that more animals will go. But we also have to ensure that when you go to the butcher stall. I couldn't get any gold for Christmas. Eh? Well, I blame you for it. <laughs> that's because you didn't look <laughs> in the right direction. <laughs> I couldn't get any gold. But, but, but we have to ensure that we have food security and food safety in the country. And food security, as I always notice, that the meat must be affordable, mm -hmm. available, and accessible and uh, we definitely need significant help and assistance in order to improve the production platform have and you decided when you're going yet to I, Morocco, to Morocco, I would yes. have to um, discuss with that cabinet and we will set up but it would be before March before March of this year plan to be there and we'll be taking some technicians as well taking a delegation to see how we can we can have that transfer of technology. Sure. Yes. Well, we have we have our agriculture.